Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. Today's system is from the user Certified X Lover in Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending in their system. And their system is called the Helios system, so without further ado everybody, let's get straight into this. So it's already on our subscribe list here on the workshop, let's go ahead and get it up. There it is, okay, and let's see what we have got in store. Okay, here we go, alright, ooh. Cool. Okay, let's just close that menu first, and that one as well. Okay, oh, it's floating in the middle. Okay, that may be convenient for us, actually, because now we can see the stuff on the right. Okay, so, this is the first thing I've submitted, uh, blah, submitted, so hopefully you like it. I apologise for bad spelling grammar mistakes. That's fine, no problem ever at all. I'm no, I'm no sane either with it. <laughs> so, well, certified next level, yeah. Okay, so, straight into the objects. Okay, so... Good stuff. Okay, so Helios 8. Oh, there we go. Now the menu's closed in. So it's a G5 type star, just smaller than the sun. Although it is smaller than our sun, it has a bit more mass. It's located 27.3 light years away from Earth. So there you go. Luminosity wise, you can see it's about half. Okay, cool. Check the zone as well. There you go. Right, so first of the planets, I'm guessing now. So let's move on. In the glare there. Okay, here it is. Let's turn off the zone. There we go. It's looking good. Okay. So the closest planet, giving it a temperature of 200 degrees. Because of this, um, it has lakes of sulfur on its molten surface. Okay. It's looking very red and mean. I like it. I think we're going to have to have a little uh, peek at the star through this reddish atmosphere. Because that could make quite the spectacle. Let's have a look around. Turn that all off. And there it is. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. It's looking pretty red. Pretty damn red. So there we go. Let's get a more of a side view here. Very nice. Yeah, that's, the, that's pretty blinding. There you go. Nice. Okay, moving on to Aries, next world out. So, there it is. A raw and rocky world with temperatures of over 60 degrees. It's famous for its giant impact crater due to a collision it had with an object around the side of Ceres in its proto phase. Okay. Looking good. I can see the crater there. Yeah, it's on the other side. Using the texture of Mimus, I'm guessing. Yes, there it is. Very nice. Has one moon. Frax. There it is. Nice. So it's the only moon that's quite an elliptical orbit due to this. Some scientists believe Frax is a piece of the planet that gave Aries its crater. Aha, uh -huh, fragment of the past. Moving on to Athena. Here it is. It's a warm planet that sees temperatures of 50 degrees on average. Although the planet is quite warm, many people believe it could be colonised and become the next home of the Apollyons. Okay, so I'm guessing there's going to be a world called Apollo in here. With the, uh, with the race on it of some kind. An alien race. Okay, so there it is. Got a moon as well. We've got Tass here. Bigger than two moons, just smaller than our moon. And then there's Tur, which is... Sorry, right, there it is, further out. The smaller the two moons, not much is known about it. Nice. Looking good. Alrighty. Now moving on to Hades. Normally people would put an object called Hades far out. Interesting. So here it is. A gas dwarf that was likely formed much closer to its star, but migrated nearer the meteor belt while disrupting the proto-rocky planet. Underneath its thick cloud layer lies a molten rocky core with lakes of sulfur, very similar to the first object we saw. He 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 yeah, well, I'm not going to try and say I can't say it. Ah... Pronunciations are scary. Right. So, anyway, here it is. On the sun there. Have a little look underneath of the atmosphere. There you go. Oh, yes. That looks cool, doesn't it? I like the way that looks. The underworld. Quite literally. Very nice. Good stuff. So, it has one moon as well. This one here. Zagreus, can you say that? The only moon, and was likely formed from the remnants of the protoplanets that got destroyed due to Hades migration outwards. However, some people believe it was captured dwarf planet from the meteor belt. Okay. Cool. Demeter, what's next? Okay, so the dwarf planet. Whereabouts are we? There he is. I guess it's in the... It was an asteroid belt, wasn't it? Yeah. Not much known about this dwarf planet. I think it has a famous green hue. Nobody knows why. There you go. Looking good. Alrighty. Next up we have Juno gas giant. First gas giant with a medium small ring system, which you can see here. Let me just keep the goggles on now, yep. Cool. On for the moons, here we go. 
pretty close. So this is Lucina. A small heavily cratered shepherd moon orbiting with Juno's ring system. Not much else is known about this moon other than it might be the remnants of a moon that got too close to Juno and got destroyed by the Rouge limit. Alrighty. Then we have Vulcan over here. The biggest moon in the system and is a Venus-like world with a dense clouds and atmosphere which causes temperatures over 150 degrees. Believe it or not, Vulcan is actually volcanically active and has hundreds of known volcanoes on its surface and might not um, or might have more we don't know about. Sweet. Pretty warm at this distance as well. There you go, underneath. Very nice. Next up we have a Bologna. It's a boring colourless moon around the size of our moon and there's not a lot unknown about it. Okay. And Minerva over here. An ice moon smaller than our own moon. It's very similar to Europa in our system that might even have an underground ocean. Very nice. Very, very nice. Oh, there's a loud siren outside. Apologies, everybody. Uh, that's the uh, pleasures of living near a road. <laughs> so, there we go. Alright, moving on. Artemis. Right, so here we go. The first ice giant, and the biggest planet as well. It's famous for its cyan blue hue, and its ring system. Nice. Have a good look at it there. Very, very nice indeedy. Okay. So, moons. Medusa, first of them all. Heavily cratered shepherd moon, similar to the Cena we just saw. There it is. Got a little shadow on the planet as well. A little eclipse going on at the moment. We have Atlas over here. Another boring moon with little to note. Got to have those in there though for a bit of variety. Uh, we've got Samus. A world with oceans. A subhabitable world covered in tundras and tigers. It's currently unknown if this moon has life or not, but further missions by the Apollyans aim to find out. We haven't actually seen the world Apollo yet, have we? Seven degrees. How far away is this from the star though? This is some pretty big distance, isn't it? I mean, how far is this? It's an ice giant. 12 AU, so this guy's getting that. Get the tidal heat, and maybe how's that getting that temperature? <laughs> Then we have Aether. It's an ice moon similar to Enceladus in our system. It's sometimes referred to as um, Erbus, opposite due to them being light and dark. Okay. Very good. We have this one here. Erbus over there. The last moon, and it's the opposite of Aether, as mentioned before. The moon is almost fully black, other than the areas of green crystals that seem to only exist on this moon. Nice. Okay. Moving on to uh, Boros and Aqui Aquio. Okay, two super Earths further out. Over here. Here they are. Set of binary super Earths. Both planets are most likely formed as ice giants, but after Aquilo was ejected from its orbit, it collided with Boros. The impact likely evaporated both planets, leave outer gassy layers, leaving just their icy cores remaining. Uh -huh. So there they are. Very good. Okay, moving on. So we've got Poseidon. Okay, so over here. The blue. The ultra blue. It's very dark, isn't it? The, the cheeky old flashlight I think we need there. There it is. The last planet of the Helios A system. And it's famous for its dark blue hue similar to Neptune. In the depths as well. So we have Bell. Small moon due to its proximity to Poseidon. It's gradually being torn apart with huge canyons spreading across its surface. And soon will be part of Poseidon's ring system. Nice. Then we have a Theseus. Boring moon with not much known other than its largest moon in the system. Okay. In the Poseidon system, anyway. Cool. So there you go. So there's those guys. Moving on to Cyrus over here. Or Cry. Cry. Oh, I spelt it different. Cyrus or Cryus. Largest dwarf planet in the system, known for its liquid oxygen oceans and atmosphere. Liquid oxygen. Check that out. Very cool. If we're just looking back at the star as well, I mean, how far away is that? Yeah, 53 AU, so that is way further than even yeah Pluto is in our own system. So that's quite the distance. You can see the star is just a tiny little speck over there. Okay, in the darkness, so there it is. Okay, who's next? Kiris. The last object in Helios A system, and it's very similar to Sedna and Make Make in our system due to its reddish pink hue. In the complete depths here. 98 AU here. Getting some pretty serious distances going on now. Okay. Nice. So, next up we have the second of the two stars. So it's Helios B. I'm guessing this is where the Apollo planet is. 
So it looks like a red dwarf. Let's see. M8 type red dwarf, similar to Proxima Centauri or Trappist 1. So not the largest object, is he? Okay. Nice. Good stuff. Luminosity is very dim, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's not bright. 100 masses of Jupiter, pretty basic size, 1 Jupiter, 1.26 Jupiters. So, for a comparison, I mean, it's not much bigger, is he? I mean, even uh, you can compare it to the Earth here, it's not the largest star ever, look. So, there you are. Alright. So, first up, we have Furrows here. This may make quite a nice sunset view here. Desert planet similar to Athena, but it's much warmer due to its proximity to its star. Okie dokie. So, let's have a little, uh, little cheeky old look here. There it is, underneath the atmosphere. Have a little look around. Turn those goggles off, and there's your brightness. So, have a look at that sky. It's pretty nice. There you go. Next up, we have Oceanus. Over here. The blue. Oh, hello there. Super Earth, 1.3 times bigger than Earth. There we go. Looks pretty frozen up as well. There it is in orbit of the red star. So next up we have Apollo, the world that we've heard about that Apollyan civilization. So here it is. It's looking pretty good. The only planet in the Helio system known and confirmed to have life. It is home to the Type 1 civilization known as the Apollyans. It's known for its red na or for its red nature due to orbiting a red dwarf star. Okay. Very good. Maybe this one will give us a nice uh, view from the surface. Let's have a little look around. There you go. Very good. There's your full view. Turn off all the interface. There you go. It's pretty nice. There you go. Ah, looking good. Right, so moving on. Kion. Just over here. It's pretty boring ice world. There's not much going on about it. Some people claim it's Hathaway just in an ice age. So it's minus 72 degrees currently. Alrighty. Cool. Then we have uh, this one here. Venti. It's a cold Venetian world where instead of volcanoes and sulfuric rain, there's ice volcanoes and snowstorms. Ah, okay. Very nice. Honestly, from the Red Dwarf, I mean, it's not going to get much of the... It's completely out of the zone, yeah, there you go. Next up we have uh, Asteria. The first only confirmed dwarf planet opts in Helios B. Not much is known about him. Yeah, not large. It's got temperature currently, but I'm not sure that will last. Then moving on to... N oh, there's also an asteroid belt there, if you look carefully, yep. Put the goggles off. So this one's outside that asteroid belt region now. Gas world, okay. The only gas giant in the system... A lot of fake people say it planet due to its unique red hue. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? Nice. Not seeing the darkness from this distance. If we look on the old um, distance there, it's not very far, but red dwarf star ain't bright. Has one moon. Oh, oh no, there we go. Warm tropical moon covered in dense rainforest, but unlike Earth's rainforest, they are red. Oh, this could be cool. Maybe we have to have a, let's have a little view from the surface. If you see the gas giant and the star together, it could be quite cool. Cool duo. So there's the star. Very dim, of course. Turn the goggles off. There's your full view of it. So very, very dim. If we look up, we should see the gas giant somewhere. Where are we looking? Star. Where's that giant? Maybe that'll help us. Little label indicator. Am I blind? Where is he? Was it below the horizon? Let's have a look. Where, 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 where are we looking? I thought it was that way, wasn't it? Now, it is pretty hidden, actually. Look, you can't really see this, the, the gas giant at all from it, but... So, if we land this and there, the gas giant should be in the sky. There, ah, is it is there, it was there. Yeah, it's just very hard to spot. Okay, imagine that giving you an eclipse. Right. Next up, we have arrows. Oh, was another wound, okay. Cratered rocky moon, much further out, yeah. Okay. And the dim star. Next up, we have Argus over here. Cold eyeball planet, just bigger than Earth, and it's similar to Trappist-1f. Nice. There he is. Good stuff. Helios-C. That was another star. Wouldn't actually spot that one at the beginning. 
Where is it? Oh, okay. Ah. Brown Dwarf. Okay. Reason to discover Brown Dwarf. Around 26 masses of Jupiter orbiting over 3,500 AU from Helios A. Although some scientists believe it isn't orbiting Helios A at all and is instead flying by. Okay. Very nice. So, what have we got around here? Helio CB, first of the worlds. We'll see very bright in the glare of the brown dwarf. Heavily cratered world, but abundance of gold within said craters, although this is heavily debated, but further missions by the Apollyons hope to find out the truth. Okay. Good. You can see all the planets in very close proximity here. So, CC. Another boring world, not much known about them. CD in the distance there. Venusian world, a temperature is over 200. Okay. Ooh. And the tiny little light that star provides. A little bit of warmth. I mean, it doesn't really have much luminosity around the wharf. So there he is. Okay. It's the Venusian world. I probably would lose its temperature eventually around the brown dwarf. And lastly, Helios CE at the end there. Gas giant. The only one to have a moon. There it is. Heavily created moon. Might be the first X moon discovered if the Helios C is flying by. Theory is correct. Nice. There it is. That concludes the tour of my system, and I said in the beginning, I hope you like it, and bye. I liked it. Very nice. Nice and simple, not too overcomplicated. I liked it. Looking good. So if we look in the uh, the glare, that brown dwarf hides all the other... Helios A is barely visible, look, in the distance there. Yeah, you can barely see it. Brown, look at the brown dwarf's true size compared to the brightness there. Very good. So there we go, let's get the full lineup for everyone. And there you go. I did like that blue giant, I have to say. It's quite a nice realistic looking world, isn't it? It's quite similar to the Planet 9 template, isn't it? It looks good. I did like this uh, Hades world as well. That was quite a cool looking Venusian kind of um, idea. That was a cool one. So there it is. We'll finish off with Hades. So yeah, there we are, everybody. That does it for this system. So again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system who submitted this. That was Certified X Lover. Enjoyed that. It was a good one. And yeah, look forward to uh, seeing more in the future from you. But um, yeah, that will send down, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button. Make sure to subscribe as well. Hope it's on the journey to 50,000 subscribers. We are just passing, I think, as I'm making this video. We're roughly on the verge of 48,000. So, a massive thank you for that milestone once we get to it. Um, yeah, I believe we're... Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're pretty close. Yeah, from when I last checked the other day. So, yeah, if we already hit it by the time this comes out, really appreciate your support. And, yeah, here's to the uh, 50,000. We are on track to get it this year. Can't wait for that. That should be good. I have to do some uh, specials and stuff, I believe. Um, but yeah, that will send on everybody. Make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.